What's up everybody, Nick Dwyer back for the 10th inning here with another edition of this day in sports history. If y'all enjoy this video, leave a like on it. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Let's get into it. This day in sports history. We start out in 1907, and in boxing, Tommy Burns would retain his title, knocking out Gunnar Moore in the 10th round to retain his title in his 7th defense. Two years later in 1909, the National Hockey Association, or the NHA, would be formed in Montreal, and some of the original members include the Montreal Wanderers and the Montreal Canadiens. This league would last until 1917, when it would become what we know today as the NHL or National Hockey League. Move up now to 1922 at the Grey Cup. Queen's University would win their first of three straight titles, defeating the Edmonton Elks 13-1. We go from the CFL to the MVP in 1948, and after a great season, maybe one of the best ever, Stan Musial of the St. Louis Cardinals would be named MVP, leading the National League in batting average, 365, runs scored, 135, RBIs, 131, hits, 230, doubles, 46, triples, 18, slugging percentage, 702, and home runs with 39. From baseball, we go to college football in 1950, and at the Iron Bowl, Alabama would defeat Auburn via shutout at home, 34 to nothing, and this would be their sixth of 47 Iron Bowl victories. Stay at the Iron Bowl one year later in 1951, and Alabama would defeat Auburn 25-7 at home to win their 7th of 47 Iron Bowls. Stay in 1951, this time moves to the NFL, and future Hall of Famer wide receiver Don Hudson would have his number 14 jersey retired by the Green Bay Packers, the first number in the history of the franchise to be retired. Now we move back to college, this time get into the first Heisman of the day in 1958, running back from Army, Pete Dawkins would win the Heisman with 1,216 all-purpose yards, 12 total touchdowns on the season. This would lead to 1,394 points. Best in second place, 1,021 points. Now we move back to the Iron Bowl in 1961, and Alabama would defeat Auburn 34 to nothing to win their 12th of 47 Iron Bowls. Now we go to the Grey Cup in 1961 and 1962. Start out in 61, though. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers would win their 6th of 11 Grey Cup titles, defeating the Hamilton Tiger Cats 21-14. One year later, we would have the same final matchup and the same result as the Winnipeg Blue Bombers would edge out the Hamilton Tiger Cats 28-27 to win their 7th of 11 Grey Cup titles. Now this Grey Cup is a little interesting. The play actually started on December 1st. This would be the only final ever to be suspended during play due to fog and the first to be finished on a Sunday. But like the previous year, it was a repeat. The Blue Bombers walked away with victory. Move up now to the 1967 Grey Cup, and the Hamilton Tiger Cats would defeat the Saskatchewan Rough Riders 24-1, and this would be the Tiger Cats' fifth of eight Grey Cup titles. We move back to the Iron Bowl, started in 1967, and Alabama would defeat Auburn 7-3 to win their 17th of 47 Iron Bowls. Stay at the Iron Bowl in 1972, and something we really hadn't said that much, Auburn would defeat Alabama 17-16 to win their 17th of 37 Iron Bowls. One year later in 1973, we go to the Davis Cup, and after clinching a famous victory the previous day, Australians Rod Laver and John Newcomb would finish a 5-0 route of the USA team, and this would be their 23rd of 28 Davis Cup titles. Stay in 1973 and we have a world record in the marathon. Machiko Gorman would run the world record on the women's side 2 hours, 46 minutes, 36 seconds. Two years later, we go back to the Heisman voting in 1975 and we have history as Archie Griffin of Ohio State would become the first player to ever win two Heismans and that is still true today. Griffin would win with 1,800 total points to best second place is 730 points. Griffin on the season, 1,450 rushing yards, 170 receiving yards, 4 touchdowns. Back to the Iron Bowl in 1978, and Alabama would defeat Auburn 34-16 to win their 25th of 47 Iron Bowls. 
Now we move to 1981 in Major League Baseball, and Fernando Valenzuela would become the third consecutive Los Angeles Dodger to be named National League Rookie of the Year. Rick Sutcliffe in 1979, Steve Howe in 1980, now Valenzuela. Valenzuela would also win Cy Young that season. On the season, 13-7, 2.48 ERA. Move over to the NFL in 1984, and Miami's quarterback Dan Marino would break the NFL single-season touchdown pass record when he would throw his 37th of the season in a 45-34 loss to the Raiders. Marino would actually finish the season with 48, but the 37th broke Y.A. Tittle's 36 touchdown record. Back to the Iron Bowl and Heisman's in 1989. Starting the Iron Bowl, Auburn would defeat Alabama 30-20 to to win their 23rd of 37 Iron Bowls. Then in the Heisman that year, quarterback Andre Ware out of Houston with 4,699 passing yards, 46 touchdowns, 3 rushing touchdowns, and 15 interceptions would win with 1,073 points. 70 points ahead of second place, 1,003 points. Now we move up one year to the 1990 Davis Cup, and Rick Leach and Jim Pugh would defeat Australians Pat Cash and John Fitzgerald 6-4, 6-2, 3-6, 7-6. To go up 3-0, they would end up winning 3-2 for the USA to claim their 29th of 32 Davis Cup victories. Move up to 1991 now in Major League Baseball, and former Pittsburgh Pirates outfielder Bobby Bonilla would become the highest paid player in the MLB when he agrees to a five-year, $29 million contract with the Mets. Oddly enough, he was the highest paid player back then, and he's still getting paid today, which is just weird. Move to 2001 now at the Davis Cup, and Nicolas Esquede would defeat Wayne Arthurs to give France a 3-2 victory after a 7-6, 6-7, 6-3, 6-3 victory. And this would be France's ninth of ten titles. Our final Davis Cup of the day in 2007, Bob and Mike Bryan would team to give the USA 3-0 lead over Russia as they would win 7-6, 6-4, 6-2 to give the USA a big enough lead. They would end up winning 4-2. This would be the USA's 32nd and most recent title. We end today's video off with two Ballon d'Ors in football. We start in 2008, Manchester United's forward Cristiano Ronaldo would win his first award as the best football player in the world, besting Lionel Messi, who would finish in second. Ronaldo would finish with 446 points, better than Messi's 281. This would be his first of five awards. Then in the 2019 vote, Barcelona forward Lionel Messi would win his record sixth award, with a total of 686 points, only seven points ahead of second place, who had 679. But that would be a sixth for the most ever. So there you go. That's what happened on this day in sports history. If I left anything out, I do apologize. If I mispronounce any names or awards, I also apologize. But I'll see everybody tomorrow for Nick Dwyer and the 10th inning.